hello, and welcome back to episode 33 of the Musicians Talk Show. I'm one of your co-hosts, Dallas DeWight. And I'm Matt Talley. How's it going, everybody? It's going well. Oh, Today's yeah. podcast is brought to you by Banzoogle. Banzoogle makes it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. Choose from hundreds of their mobile-friendly themes and then customize your design and content. With just a few clicks, it's a super easy visual editor. You don't need to know coding or any of that stuff. All the features you need for a professional website already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch. Here's the best part. Commission-free right on your website. They don't take anything from you. Mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters. Um, listen to the Dave Cool episode. We talk about the importance of a mailing list and why you should have one if you don't. Integrations to pull in content from all your online services like Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, and live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Guys, the people that work in Banzoogle are all musicians. They work for musicians. They understand what you're going through, and they can help you get there. Uh, Banzoogle plans start at just $8.29 a month and include your own free custom domain name, so everything's right here in one spot. Go to Banzoogle.com to try it for free for 30 days, and be sure to use our promo code TMTS to get 15% off your first year. That's TMTS. For the musicians talk show, Banzoogle websites built for musicians by musicians. Man, Matt, who do we have today? We got Sydney Allen today. I came across on Instagram, and she's been nothing but awesome to talk to. And uh, we had a great podcast with her. Yeah, yeah, just just an all around pleasant person yep. and killer player. And That's who we uh, look for, we talk about so many cool things. Uh, not the least of which is her her Instagram marketing abilities, which seem to be very good because yeah. you found her through Instagram. Nikki Six found her through Instagram. Yeah, we talk about all of it. And so much more. And I think I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of this episode. Yep. So let's get started. First of all, thanks so much for doing the show. We really appreciate that. Of course. No, thank you. I'm happy to be on the show. Uh, I wanted to start at the beginning and figure out how you got started in music. What what kind of led from you starting at age 12? We saw that on the Nikki Six thing, which we'll talk about later, to today. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I've been in music my entire life. I mean, I started to play piano when I was really young. Um, and I loved the music. I loved like, um, film music and just kind of the lighter stuff. But I remember one day I was listening to the radio and I've, I've loved classic rock forever, but that was the moment that I heard Led Zeppelin. And I just remember being blown away. I like couldn't understand what was going on. It was so cool sounding, you know, like it was, it was just this crazy guitar tone that grabbed me. And so from that moment, I was like, I want to play guitar. <laughs> that that sounds way cool than piano, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it just drew me to it. I don't know if it was, if it was, you know, the time in my life I was looking for something new or if it was just at that moment, that was the point that I actually heard Led Zeppelin. Who knows? But I'm happy for it because I don't think anything else would have driven me to guitar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually really funny and similar to my story, but it was Guns N' Roses instead. I remember listening yeah. to Welcome to the Jungle the first time, and I was just like, like you said, just totally blown away and ready to tackle the guitar. So that's awesome. Is that, do you think yeah. Led Zeppelin and that kind of inspiration is, is what kind of fueled your work ethic for working hard at guitar? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember, um, I mean, from somebody who knew nothing about the guitar at the time, you know, it's completely different than learning, you know, piano, like stringed instruments are different. I remember going into like my first guitar lesson going, can you teach me Zeppelin? And of course everyone would look at me and go, uh, okay, you know, this is your very beginning, you know, we got to kind of start small, but I was like, no, I want to learn Zeppelin. And I remember probably for a stray year or two, that's all I learned. You know, I respected everything else, but it definitely fueled it. Just, I just, fell in love with all of it, all of the, the catchy riffs, you know, and the drums are huge. And I think that's what grabbed me, you know, and of yeah. course I branched out to everything else and all the metal and, and punk and all of that. But, um, that definitely fueled me for quite a while until I was able to branch out and listen to other styles and, you know, but yeah, I was stuck on Zeppelin for quite a while. Everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you teach guitar at all as well? Yes. Yes. I do teach guitar. What do you think is different in the students that really take to it and um, for lack of a better term, I'll, I'll say it again, attack the guitar like someone like you, someone like Matt, someone like me did, as opposed to someone who just picks it up and then, you know, three months later, they, they're bored, can't progress, they're done. Yeah, I mean, and I try to, because I get all kinds of students, you know, I get students who are just there to have fun, you know, it's something different, you know, they're in school and school can be stressful and they're just there to see me just to have fun. And I try to recognize that, but I do have quite a few students who are very into it. And I just think they, 
I, I always call guitar an obsession, you know, right? Like us, we're just constantly obsessed with the guitar, you know, and how it works yeah. and different, different sounds we can create or different riffs. And I think, I think that's kind of always within someone, you know, if, if, if you're meant to play guitar, you're meant to play guitar, I think. Yeah. And I think it's really cool when I, when I teach these students and I can tell, okay, this student really cares, you know, they're practicing quite often, you know, yeah. they're coming, they're excited when they walk in, they're ready. They just want to start playing. They don't want to just chit chat or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So I think the guitar tends to find the people who are willing to play, you know, and I think it's good too, cause it is, you know, it is for enjoyment, you know, mm -hmm. and music is enjoyable. It's not supposed to be work. But for those who really do dive into it, I, I love seeing it too. You know, I love seeing yeah. uh, other musicians who are younger and they're just so stoked and it just, it helps a lot too. Like if you're stuck in a rut, you see this, you know, this younger student and they're just so excited, you know, it gets you really excited and it reminds you that this is enjoyable, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Somewhat of a refreshment. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Is there any way to kind of teach a student to love the guitar? Do you think that's something they can kind of they just need some help getting to that point? Or do you think it's something you just have or you don't? That's a, that's a good question. I think it's something that really grows on somebody. I don't know. When I started, when I grabbed the guitar, I didn't care. I would make my fingers bleed. They would give me chords and I would learn all of them. Like I was obsessed from day one, but I think also, you know, kids come in and their parents are go, maybe you should try the guitar and they're in it and yeah. you know, your fingers hurt and they're not quite sure. And they're like, Oh, this doesn't sound right. But they keep working and working. And I think once they see success and enjoyment yeah. of like, Oh, I can play a song now or stuff like that. Then I think it really grows on them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think you the, the longer I've had students, yeah, it, gr it definitely grows on them. So that's a good question because I think it might depend on the person. <laughs> I yeah, agree. for sure. I can, I completely agree. Uh, what is what does your own practice routine look like these days and how has it evolved over the past, say, I don't know, three to five years? Oh, my. Um, I try to practice as much as I can. I definitely always say that that life can get in the way as you get older. You know, when I teach these young students, I go, you have four hours. Play, play the four hours. Trust me, because, you know, as we all know you know, work and everything else in life and, and, you know, family is important. You know, we have to kind of take those into account, but yeah, I definitely try to, you know, I have, you know, a set amount of songs for maybe a gig. Those are my number one, you know, that's number one that I go to practice those. Um, sometimes I'll have a speed exercise that I'm working on. Um, that's kind of my main, um, focus right now is speed and endurance. Um, so I'll kind of do that and I do like to work on some kind of improv soloing in there and it kind of, it evolves. Like I try to not get bored with it, which I think is very common, right? I used to practice the same thing all the time and then I'd get bored, you know? So I try to, every time I sit down, I go, what do I really need to work on? Um, but definitely the speed has been, has been a factor in this year as far as music goes. Um, in the past, I've just, I've kept a steady, like, all right, practice a few scales for 30 minutes, practice, you know? few of my songs for an hour practice, you know, kind of add some things in there every week, but I try to evolve it as much as I can now. It's nice. definitely different yeah. as I've gotten older. Yeah. As I've gotten older, I've tried to just make it more interesting for myself because it, I don't want it to turn into a chore. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I think that's part of what we were talking about before staying interested in it. If you keep yourself stay interested in it in different aspects of guitar, you know, like, um, you can experiment with different guitars, different gear, different styles of playing, different styles of practice, you know, all that stuff. Keep yourself interested. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that's the big part now, you know, as you play for a long time, like when, when we're younger, we see the progression that we see, we move up really quickly, you know, we can yeah. progress really quickly. And as we've played for a long time, it's really hard to kind of break, break down that wall. You know, if you're really stuck at a certain, I don't know, I get stuck at certain speeds sometimes. Like I just practice with a metronome and I'm just stuck, you know, and it's can get frustrating, but you have to remember that you know, we've played for a long time and we kind of have to break. It's it's not going to be this fast growing pace like it was when years ago, you know, right. it's kind of going to be this gradual climb, which is hard. You know, if, if you're by yourself practicing, that's a hard thing to, you know, remind yourself in yeah, the moment. Yeah, you definitely, know? definitely. And I love the yeah. idea of a, a dynamic practice routine that revol revolves around constant self-assessment. Like, you know, where yeah. am I? What do I need to do right now? to get better. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to take that approach just cause you know, I, I read this thing earlier that just says, you know, something that worked for you earlier may not work for you now because you're a different person. You yeah. know, I'm different than I was four right. years ago. Yeah. 
And I have to remember, like, I can't force that routine on myself or else it's just going to be detrimental. So I tried now. And that's my thing. You know, everybody's different. You know, I think having a strict regimen is very, very important. But I think for me right now, it's very, very mellow and very just like, all right, what do I need to attack? Because I don't know, I'm I'm my own worst critic. So there's always something that I'm like, oh, you're not quite there yet. You know, everyone Mm -hmm. has that. So I'm always like, okay, what what do I need to work on? But I'm a big fan of a, of a really strict me- regimen too. That's good. So. Yeah. So what, this is something I'm always fascinated by, but um, what is your approach to learning a lot of songs in a short amount of time? Cause as guitar players, we can often get a gig dropped in our laps for even tonight that you have to right. learn 30 songs you've never heard before. Like what is your approach when that, that happens? Ooh, that's a tough one. Cause I don't know about you, but I tend to get sidetracked. You know, you like certain songs and you're like, I want to play this 20 times and get it yeah, good. Yeah. But there's, you know, I tend to get you gotta super learn the sidetracked. Solo note for note. It's like, ah, oh, just get close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah. It's a hard mind game on that one. I like to, I definitely have to stop myself, but I like to just write down the song form right away. Like sit down, don't try to figure it out. What's the song form? Is it verse, chorus, verse, chorus? Is it verse, pre-chorus, chorus? Is there a bridge? Like write that out for yeah, every song. Yeah. Yeah, because then I feel it's a lot easier, and I'm going to remember it too. Like if I don't, if you're not allowed any, you know, uh, sheet music or anything on stage, then I'm going to remember that form a lot better. Yeah, if you wrote it um, down. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that that just works for me, and I and mm-hmm. I try to tackle that every time, um, and then just figure out the key, and then I can kind of go from there. Like I'm, yeah. I think a memory comes in very handy when you play music, having a good memory. Yeah. Um, which I think we all develop. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you have to. Yeah, yeah, it's a part of the part of the thing. Yeah. yeah. One of um, one of the funniest stories about this that I remember is uh, we interviewed Joel Hoekstra a few episodes back, and he he was getting okay. just when he had gotten the Night Ranger gig, he knew all the riffs, he just didn't know the arrangements. So he had a tech, I, I guess off to the wings. He had big cardboard posters with <laughs> with the arrangements on, and I I just oh my that was yeah. great. I just can't imagine at a Night Ranger gig you have yeah. something like that. But yeah, it's it's oh not my. so much the the riffs and the solos and those things. It's where each part goes that gets so confusing when you're learning so many songs at once. So yeah, yeah. the arrangement point right. that's right. that's gold. I mean, you have to have your arrangements down. Yeah, that's where it comes for me. Otherwise, you know, you get lost and and that's no fun if you're just kind of lost in the middle of the song at the gig. You know, might as well be confident. You know. Yeah. 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 The song's going. <laughs> Yeah. So what are your thoughts, Sydney, on music school? Have you ever considered going to music school? Have you been to music school? I'm not sure on your full background, but. Yes. Yes. Um, I went to Berkeley College of Music okay. in Boston. Awesome. Um, I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of, of music school. I think it can really help someone and give someone a lot of direction. Um, that being said, though, music can be self-taught. And I'm not against being self-taught at all. I think I think a lot of people have the ability if they if they pay attention to technique and pay attention to good players, then they can grasp that technique and bring it into their own, you know? Yep. So I don't think music school is necessary. Um, but I think it absolutely helps. I think it was necessary for me cause that was one of my goals. I wanted to go to music school. I, I studied, um, more film composing, um, at Berkeley, but I did a lot of guitar too. So film composing is something that I think takes a lot of formal training yeah so that's where it benefited me you know learning film composing and learning how to write for an orchestra which is something that i would have never done if i hadn't gone to music school so i think that's important um but i don't know i think i i go both ways um i know i'm a school person i like direction and i like the schedule of it so i did very well and i don't know if i'm going to go back to school but right now that's not in the future um but you know, it, it definitely depends. I definitely think it can be self-taught. So uh, one question I had is for something for someone who may be considering music school, but they're on the fence or, you know, they're working with their parents to try to convince them that that's the best route to take. What are some benefits of music school over being self-taught that might not be so obvious? Right. I mean, there, I have a lot of thoughts. There's music school can definitely skyrocket you ahead of everybody else. You know, if you think of it, a lot of the lessons that they would teach you, you would end up learning by yourself at a show, at a gig, booking a gig yourself, maybe, you know, like that's good to, you know, learn yourself. But when you go to school, they have that knowledge that they can share with you. You know, you could go for music production and you can learn by yourself by creating a home studio and everything and, and, you know, learning online. But 
you know, I think when you go to college, when you go to music school, they have that benefit of giving you all these skills straight up without you having to do the trial and error. You can learn it right away and begin practicing those skills from people who are in the business. You know, I don't know about any other school, but at Berkeley, everybody is in the music industry that would teach there. So it's important. Um, I definitely think if you're if you're okay with, you know, the discipline, like if that's not a problem, you know, if you can have the discipline to go to school and really pay attention and, and music school is actually really exciting. Like I loved it. You know, you're around other people who play, you yeah. know, they, you have the opportunity to collaborate with everybody. That's what I was going to say too. Everybody's in one spot. Yeah. yeah. Putting like, everybody in one spot is a hugely advantage, you know, like full, just being able to talk to anybody next to you and it's kind of doing the same thing you are and you're everywhere. Yeah. So. It's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you just tend to, you meet people, you know, it puts you in a position where you're meeting people who are also doing the same thing as you. And that can be good. You know, we're supposed to come together and and work together. You know, we're not all enemies, you know, so it's, Mm -hmm. I I really like it. I think that's the benefit of music school. I absolutely think if, if there's ever an opportunity to go, go for it, you know, don't even, you don't have to go through the whole thing. Just, you know, even a few classes can be, you know, very important and eye opening too. um, but it definitely, you know, it takes a certain person to do that. So I definitely, yeah, yeah for sure. Depends. So, um, yeah. where, where are you originally from Sydney? Los Angeles. Okay. So California. you were born and raised in Los Angeles. Yep. And then you moved to Boston. Yep. For a little bit to do my Boston stuff. And then, and then now I'm back in Los Angeles. Okay. So. Cause I wanted to ask you, what are some of the benefits to living in a big city? And I was going to ask you, what are some of the benefits to moving to a big city, but you've lived there your whole life. So um, for people who live like we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is a, a decently sized city, but it's not, you know, a hub of music and entertainment like Los Angeles is mm-hmm. for someone thinking about moving from a place like Charlotte or a, a small town and, you know, wherever to a big city to pursue music. What are the, what are the pros? What are the cons? What are the things they need to think about? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I mean, everybody's in it over here, you know, everybody's in it. You're going to find a lot of people who are working in film. You're going to find a lot of people working in music, you know, acting. And I think there's a certain energy to that. You're going to always be meeting people. If you go to a show, there's always people to meet who live in the area who are doing the same thing as you, you know, and I think it can get tricky in other cities where not everybody's in music, to find people to work with, to find other guitar players, to find a drummer, you know, if you're trying to make a record, trying to, you know, find a producer, I think that can get tricky. But over here, there's so much of it that you have a lot of options, you know, Um, and I think that's really important. But also, as a con, it's pretty saturated as well. You know, like a lot of people, there's so many bands over here, you know, there's so many people who are, you know, have a recording studio, um, who are working on their next film, um, you know, who are also pursuing acting. So you have to really work hard. You have to be the, you know, the go-to person. Yeah. It's hard to stand out. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. You definitely have to find a way to stand out, whatever that is, you know, whatever your genre or, or whatever your style, maybe how you play on stage, you have to find your brand and you have to stick with it or else, it's easy to get lost, you know, and, yeah, and that yeah. in a way should be, it should be good. It should, you know, you should be determined to, to be the go-to bassist or go-to drummer in that genre. So that's a little bit of a con. I think when you get to smaller cities, um, you know, when people think of music, they should think of you right away, you know, over here, it can be tricky to get, you know, washed away and all that, but either one is great. You know, I think it would be cool to work in a small city and just, mm-hmm. you know, not be it's very saturated over here with a lot of bands in the same genre you know and you all are trying to have the same look and but in a way it's good too because you meet so many so many people sure you know sure so what would you say uh your brand is and how would you suggest others find their own that's a good question i think in a my brand right now, I'm still trying to define it and find my own little, um, you know, section of it, but I kind of classify myself as like female fronted hard rock. That's kind of what I, I go with and that's what I write. Um, but I get a lot of, I get put in a lot of eighties rock bands, you know, big hair metal stuff, (laughs) Uh, but definitely female fronted, just rock guitarist. That's kind of what I'm, I'm pinned at, which is great. You know, I'm happy to you know, support that. It's um, very cool, yeah. and it depends. Yeah. You just have to find, um, you know, what makes you unique, which everybody's got it. There's always, you know, something, um, and maybe there's something in your genre that 
maybe you combine, you know, dubstep and rock, or maybe you combine, you know, country and rap. I don't know. You know, right. you can find that if there's something unique about you or, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're the, I don't know. It definitely depends. You could, you could think of anything, just something. I think your brand is something unique and something that when people think of you, that's what they think of. Yeah. As long as you're being yourself and you're not, you know, trying to put on any kind of front, then it's easy to be unique. Just be yourself. You know, your influences are different than everybody else's. Not everybody has the same exact style. So. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, I know, I know it's, you know, it sounds like cheesy to say, but absolutely. Because if you're up there trying to fake it and try to play, you know, be all metal in this metal band, but you're not into it, it's not going to work. You know, you have to really work on yeah. 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 And, and people recognize that on stage. It, it shows. Yep, yep. <laughs> it shows. People will know right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember being the only like rock guy at my high school when it was in the phase when everyone was into metal. Right. And um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like, man, I just can't, I can't get into it. And I didn't have a lot of music friends in my high school, but <laughs> yeah, so it feels kind of weird. Oh, but, yeah. But I get no, it. Yeah. It was, I was like, am I, am I the crazy one? Like, why don't you like rock? Yeah. I get it. I mean, I, so. I, yeah, I definitely was. A lot of people were like, a oh, rock, that's kind of scary, because I'd I'd have leather jackets, and everyone would be like, oh, I don't know, but I stuck with it, and people enjoy it now, yep. <laughs> so yeah. I'm happy. Yep. Yeah, when you get out of high school and college, it's right. when it all comes together, I found. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, there's definitely, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about your um, latest song release, which is Say Goodbye, is that right? Yep, yep, okay. Say Goodbye. Cool. We listened to it right before... Um, we got on the air. Can you tell us a little bit about the the production and the writing and all the stuff that went into making that that song? Yeah, um, that was a really fun song to write because um, this is that was actually the first song under my own name. I used to work under bands and write music in other other groups, but this was the first one under Sydney Ellen. Um, and I called in my best friend Moxie Ann to sing on that song. Um, so that's all her vocals on there. Um, and we can, we kind of tend to be a really good duo for songwriting. Um, and I just went to her and I said, Hey, you know, it's kind of a new start for me. I really want to just put together this new song. I've got this riff, you know, what do you think? And she's like, yeah, of course. So we kind of put together just a song that, that, you know, represented all of our lives together. Cause we've been best friends forever. We've been playing music, um, since we were very, very young. So she's a part of that also. And so we kind of wrote something that accumulated all of our work together. And this was just kind of like, Hey, you know, just because, you know, everything didn't work out in the past, we're moving forward. And you can even see on the, on the album cover, it's just, I look towards the light. That's the idea. We're looking towards the light, looking towards the future. Um, and that's just kind of the idea. I just wanted to write a, just a cool rock song just to get people excited. You know, something you could jam out to you play really loud. You know, that was the idea of it. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's so, cool. So who are some of your biggest influences for this um, genre of music you're writing now? As a, Or maybe it's Led Zeppelin from the old days, or maybe it's not. But what kind of stuff have you been listening to to kind of get your head in, in the zone? Yeah, that's that, that's a funny question because I, you know, I tend to ask, you know, everybody who follows me too, like, what genre do you think of me? Because I just tend to, I lo- just love like a nice heavy chorus, maybe a cool riff, some big drums. Um, and people have saying like, um, like some Paramore or, you know, kind of just that female fronted, uh, mm-hmm. rock, yeah. which sounds cool. You know, like all of that, like Evanescence, um, right. cause Mo- Moxie does sound a lot like Evanescence, which is really cool too. Yeah. Um, so all of that, and, and it's a compliment, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy people think of it, you know, like that. So a lot of that, you know, people have said, um, you know, like Lacuna Coil and I mean, I don't know who else, a hailstorm yeah. and, yeah, so they've said that. Um, but yeah, I definitely, you know, you'll hear a little bit of, you know, kind of Zeppelin inspired stuff in there, maybe the drums and then, um, you know, some, I, I do like my white stripes cause they are very heavy on just a simple riff, right, <laughs> you know, they're right. very heavy on that. So you'll hear a little bit of that. Um, yeah. And a lot of it is just, you know, I just like to write music that, that sounds cool. You know, I'm not here to just write the greatest song in the world. I'm here to just write just a cool song that I'm happy with at the end of the day. And I hope mm-hmm. other people like it too. <laughs> yeah. So what was the production process like for this song? Oh, the production process. We actually put quite a, a big rush on this one. I just wanted to really get it done. Um, so we just spent a day in the studio 
Um, we did it at uh, Costa Mesa Recording Studios. Um, nice. They've worked with um, Avenged Sevenfold and Green Day and a whole bunch of others. And so we got along really nicely um, as far as the direction on on the song. Um, and then I'm trying to think we had... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to think it was a big blur. It was definitely a big day in the studio all day till like midnight. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And um, which was cool. Like at the end of it, you felt really good. Um, and we just we put it all together. Um, I had some of the drums already written, but we definitely brought in a few people to help us out. Um, and we just really, you know, we were able to add little little snippets of like, you know, guitar stuff here and there. Because I think in the past I've been very heavy on on just standard rock band, drums, guitar, bass, vocals. And this time I was able to add a little bit of candy to it, a little bit of, you know, keyboards and synth and, and little surprises in there. So that's something that I really enjoyed. Yeah, that sounds cool. It sounded awesome. Yeah, oh, it's, the production was great. Thank that's you. what I was asking, yeah. What kind of uh, gear were you using for the guitar tones and everything? Ooh, guitar tones. Um, I definitely used EMG pickups in my um, ESP eclipse Is and that then the sparkly one yeah the sparkle one love that one silver sparkle they call it yeah so the emg pickups really helped with um with just that high gain tone i was looking for um we ran it through a bogner uber shawl and then a pv5152 okay cool you yeah like the we, two we over just, the three yeah <laughs> yeah i definitely i don't know it just seems to it fits it fits with you know just the type of guitar i'm using and everything mm -hmm. um and then, yeah, and then I'm trying to think, who, what did we use for bass? I'm trying to remember. It's definitely a huge blur. Uh, but for guitar, that's that's what we use. And, of course, my, my standard Mogami cables in the middle of all of it. I don't go anywhere without the Mogami cables. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, I got to have them. What is, uh, is that kind of your signature rig, would you say? Or do you kind of switch it up? Or what kind of live yeah, stuff do you Yeah, I tend to, use? I mean, yeah, it definitely depends. Um, I love using the 5152 uh, live. And um, that definitely just has, has a lower sound. I used to use the, um, Marshall JCM 900, um, which I really like. I still have it. Um, and it was great for all the eighties gigs, but definitely for my original stuff, I was looking for something a bit tighter. Um, the Marshall tends to be a little trebly. Yeah. And sure. so live, it tends to be kind of harsh, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and I do use it. I still use it. Especially but, with um, those four twelves pointing right at your face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, I tend to, once I switched to the PV, I, I felt, I felt pretty good. I was like, all right, I feel really good with this tone right now, especially for live. Um, that mm -hmm. tends to be my setup. I don't, I don't, I don't use anything really fancy. Um, I use a few pedals on there. Some, you know, I like the MXO sugar drive and I like my carbon copy delay, um, and my Mogami. So it's clear and you know, that's kind of it. I don't use anything super fancy. Nice. But, have you ever messed with uh, amp modelers like the Kemper or the Axfex or anything? Yeah, yeah, I really like them. I really do. I'm definitely, um, I'm not huge into production. You know, I write a few demos here and there, but I definitely know somebody else can do it better than me. <laughs> so um, I do mess with them. Um, but at the end, I, I think I tend to be very um, like old school where I want a live amp going, yeah. you know, yeah. when I record. That's my thoughts too. Um, yeah, I tend to, you know, I, I know I should branch out and I know that's, you know, it's good too, but I kind of have this like old school feel inside me going, no, it's got to be super authentic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm an avid Kemper user myself and, um, oh, awesome. Matt is not. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, but I, but I have no qualms about using them. I mean, everything out of here sounds great out of it. So it's, it's, it's just like mentality thing. I think it is like, it's just what I gravitate towards some weird way. I don't know. You know? Yeah. For me, it's all about yeah. the convenience. I can throw the Kemper in my backpack and I'm done. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and Matt, that's Matt's cool. loading amps in 15 yeah. minutes after I'm sound checked. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> Let yeah, them cool down, the, warm up. Yeah, I tend to love all my day too. I yeah. know. Yeah. I definitely love the the amp thing. I mean, one of the one of my favorite amps I've ever played out of was the 5153, which I owned for a while. And um, Ooh, a, lot of, a lot of tube amps I play out of, I'm just... I, I grew up playing modeling because it's cheaper and easier to access with stuff like the, the pod and... You know, you can practice in your bedroom when you're 16 and without breaking the glass from your Marshall JCM and that kind of stuff. But uh, so I was never really used to tube amps and all the tube amps I played, I didn't really care for. They just didn't have the characteristics that I was looking for in a sound. Right. Um, thankfully, yeah, I found the Kemper, which is which is kind of the best of both worlds. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I definitely had to do quite a few, you know, a big search because I would hear, I would hear it and I would go, oh, I don't really like that, you know, or I'd hear the recording back and I'd be like, no, that's not what I want, but I didn't know what I wanted, you know? And so I just had to go around trying different apps, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just finding, you know, and finally I, yeah. I stuck with the, I think that's and, a search every guitar player goes through. <laughs> definitely. Right. <laughs> Good. We're not alone in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I got to know, how did the Nikki six interview come about? Cause we were watching that just before oh. we started. Yeah, that was that was an awesome experience. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, Nikki Six just came across my Instagram um, account and just saw me playing. I think he saw me play uh, "Stairway to Heaven" solo. Um, for those of you who don't know, I just I just like to play cover songs every once in a while because people ask her solo, you know. So I like to post it up on there. And um, yeah, he came across it and he said, "Hey, if you want to ever come on my show, you know, let me know." Very cool. And I had this song, I had my song coming out and I was like, yeah, of course, you know, he lives, he lives, you know, and, or I was close in LA and he was like, are you close in LA? And I go, yeah. yeah. So, um, it just worked and it, it was a good experience. We just came on there and he said, Hey, play some of your favorite, favorite riffs that you like. And we'll talk music and talk guitars. And he's a really nice guy. So I, it was an awesome experience. Yeah. He's had some We're awesome all... guitar player guests on there. So you're yeah. among yeah, some we great names. Show. Yeah. We actually watch that show a lot before we start yeah. podcasting. Yeah, yeah definitely. That. <laughs> so it's good inspiration yeah yeah it, it was definitely really cool and everyone there was super super nice so overall it was fun you know and i knew everyone you know when i announced it i knew everyone was going to be really excited mm -hmm. um and i was interested to see what you know his followers had to say um because of course i was very new yeah. you know and he he he's very kind to bring somebody like me on the show so um I was curious what everyone had to say and they were, were all very nice very you know they were all excited they're like we're so excited for your new song and and you're a great player and so overall it was just a very positive experience are you a pretty big crew fan yeah yeah oh i used to play all the songs too you know i enjoy it all definitely i've i've been in all the 80s bands so yeah. that's yeah. my life too <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah you have to love it i love the big hair and um yeah the performance of it too yeah, you know it's, it's not so much just listening to music it's it's the show yeah which I, which I care about as well. So definitely. You got to drag, drag people out of their houses and get them out there to see it. So yep. you got to put something yeah, on more than just yeah. the music. So yeah, and uh, I, yeah. something we ask every guest on the show is how do you stay creative and inspired? That's, a, that's a really good question. I bet. Do you stump some people when you ask this? <laughs> uh, we, oh, <laughs> it's funny. A lot of people say that's a really good question, but, um, I mean, yeah, I guess, what would you say, Matt? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes they get a little pause. There's you don't definitely, have to worry there's definitely about some, thinking, much. some thinking pause going on for sure. Yeah. I know I, if someone asked me that, I wouldn't know what to say, so. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's it's kind of an internal battle of, you know, trying to stay, you know, I think positive while you're, while you're writing your songs because it's easy to wake up the next morning and listen to it and go, oh, this sucks. Yeah. You know, just because we get in our own head or, you know, we listen to an incredibly produced song right before we went back to our demo and yeah. we're like, uh oh, this doesn't sound good. Um, yeah, it's definitely hard. I try I I try to block off time for myself because it's it can be hard. Like if you only give yourself an hour to write music, you're kind of forcing yourself to like really rush into it. But I kind of try to block off like four or five hours if possible, you know, whatever day. And and I just get in the zone and just really think about what do I want for this song. Um, and then that kind of puts me in the mindset for if I do it weekly or if I do it every few days a week, it puts me in the mindset that I know, okay, every, you know, let's say Wednesday I write songs. It puts me in the mindset that when Wednesday com is coming up, I got to be ready with to add something to my song or, you know, to improve on something or re-record the guitars or something. Right. So it's kind of so, always in your mind. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, I try not to stress myself out and say every day I'm going to write, which is great, but you know that can be hard to do. <laughs> you yeah, know, as that's far good as too because everything else. I, I like what you say about stressing yourself out because if you put unreasonable goals on yourself, it can be kind of counterproductive. Even if the goal, if you actually went through with it, would be productive, just the thought of having an unreasonable goal can kind of slow you down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but if I'm stressed or thinking of other things, like I'm not going to write a song, or <laughs> you know, I'm not, not going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good one, <laughs> you know. So I try to, I try to pick some time out where I can really focus and ask myself, you know, what do I want to, what, where does the song want to go, or where, where, what should I write for this song? Um, and it's working, you know. In the past, I, I have worked every single day on music, um, but you know, life, like I said before, if life gets in the way, you know, things change. It's not going to be, you know, cookie cutter every day, 
you know, stuff happens. So, um, I try to block off time. Hopefully, you know, if anybody tries this, hopefully it works for them. Um, but I think it's just a trial and error and finding, finding your points where you're most creative too. Like I tend to be more alert in the morning. Um, Mm, yeah, you know, at night and even too, like I started just going, no, I really need to write. So I'll write in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, so it depends, but yeah. you have to find your spot. Like if it's right after work, you're going to be tired and you're, you might not want to write. <laughs> yeah. So how about, uh, like exercising? I've definitely heard that people like to go like for a jog or something and not nothing like super strenuous, nothing like uh, crazy. Like you're going to be panting and all full of sweat, but just like <laughs> some kind of, uh, aerobic exercise that's going to get your mind, it gets all your blood flowing and your mind working kind of that's yeah, definitely and when, when you write is a huge thing. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people think of exercising differently. So some people really hate it, you know, and afterwards they're like, oh, this was terrible. But for me, I tend to be really energized afterwards. And I think that helps too. Yeah. So if you tend to be energized, even if you're like, have to force yourself to get out there, but afterwards you feel good, then absolutely do that right before. Cause you're going to, you're going to get back and you're going to dive right into it. Yeah. So it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely a battle and it's, it's your own battle. You know, you have to really know yourself. Cause I could be giving all this advice. I could be saying, you know, you could do this, but it may not work for you. You know, that works for right. me. So. Absolutely. Well, something yeah. I was very excited to ask you about is, um, sure. your approach to using Instagram and social media to market yourself, which is a huge tool for anyone looking to do music or anything creative like that, um, to use to market themselves and get themselves out there. And you seem to have done a really good job because it's how Nikki six found you. That's how Matt found you. Yep. So, um, I want to, I want to kind of know what your plan is. I want to pull the curtain back and see, see what, what you can offer our listeners in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I think, I think social media in general, we're in this world where it is very, very important. If you're not on social media nobody's going to know who you are. I hate to be, you know, harsh, but that's where everyone is. You know, everybody's on Facebook, you know, the, the younger crowd is on Instagram And I think you need to, if you're not on there or if you are kind of on there, but you don't post, you need to, you know, start bringing that up because that's where everybody looks now. If they hear your band, if you played a show at, you know, whatever, the biggest venue, you know, in your city and they go look you up on Instagram in the middle of your set and they can't find you, they might forget, you know, they're, you know, you can hope they're going to still follow you. But I think that's very important to be on there, first of all, um, which I think a lot of people are. but then I just, you know, I, I try to post very often and I try to post, you know, about my life and what I do in my downtime um, because people are interested. Anybody that follows you is going to be, you know, they're following you for you. You know, they like they like what you do, whatever it is, you know, your podcast or, or guitar or, you know, maybe you, you know, play bass or anything. But um, I think it's very important to be on there. And I just try to, you know, I'm friends with everybody who's on Instagram. You know, we're all friends. We all, I don't know if you see my posts. We just talk about guitars. We talk about guitars all day. We talk about music. Um, and, and I think that's important too, because you're not there to just post happy photos of your face and selfies all day. You're supposed to, you know, talk about music and, or whatever you do, you know, talk about right. what you do right? and, and ask people to get involved because that's, that's what social media is. You know, we're not here to just, share and then turn it off. It's for interacting, you know, it's for interacting and connecting. And I'm, you know, I'm grateful, right? You know, we we got connected through Instagram and and I've had a lot of opportunities because I've been on social media. And I think that's something that nobody should miss out on, you know, don't miss out on it. And you have the ability to connect with everybody because everybody's on it. So, you know, take advantage. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So what are some uh, upcoming career plans you have that we can be on the lookout for? Oh, well, that is a good question. Cause I don't, I don't necessarily say all this stuff. It's normally just in my head. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think new music is on the way. I'm not huh. going to say what, but lots of new music on the way. Um, and something very cool coming along with that. Um, cool. some new shows with a new group that I'm not going to say as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's on the way. Um, yeah, hopefully just more more fun. I'm hoping for some more songs. Cause obviously like you can tell I'm a songwriter. Um, and that's what I enjoy, but I tend to be very, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. So I tend to not want to release songs right away. I want to make sure it's, you know, exactly the way I want. Um, but new music is, is on the way for sure. Cool. Awesome. Well, Sydney, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, everything you've said has been so 
so valuable to our listeners. Absolutely. And I, I can't wait to see the reaction we get. So thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, if there's anything you need from us, we'll be in touch. So thank you again. And we'll talk soon. See you, Sydney. Fantastic. See you. Hey, guys. First of all, thank you so much for listening. If you could please take a quick moment to subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating and review. Your feedback seriously is really important and it helps us keep the show alive. Check out MusiciansTalkShow.com to sign up for our mailing list. If you do, we're going to send you our main theme song and a few other surprises. Plus, you'll always be the first to know what episodes are coming up. If you want to help support the show so we can keep putting out the highest quality content possible, please follow the Support the Show link at our website and consider donating to our Patreon page. Lastly, if you have an idea for a guest or a question you want to discuss, contact us through any of the contact forms on our website, and we'll do everything we can to make it happen. Whew, all right. That was a lot, but we got through it. Thanks again, guys, and we will see you soon. Thank you.